Brian. I'm joined again by my colleague David from Plain Concepts. Welcome to Plain TV. This is going to be the episode two for the sonar wall. Uh, be sure to check out episode one if you want a general overview of what sonar is. The link will be below here. Uh, but for this episode, we're going to dive into some of the config stuff that we touched on in episode one, mainly rules. Uh, and so really I want to understand, and um, David's going to explain for us, how do these rules work in Sonar? And how can I possibly create my own rule and custom rule uh, that I want to run? So David? Hello. So today I'm going to start with explaining how a rule works, yeah. and then we can go into that. Okay. So for example, we're going to take a rule. Well, this is the project of the Sonar Word project. Okay. So as you can see, we have we are using a mono repo. Uh, so every component, every rule is its own package then in npm. Okay. Okay. So well, let's take a look to the rule HTTPS only. Okay. Let's look at some security. Yeah. Uh, this rule is part of the is one of the security rules we already have in Solarwall. Okay. And what we check in this rule is two things. Okay. The first one is that the URL you are analyzing is HTTPS. Okay, and the second one is like the all the content you have in the in your uh, website is also HTTPS. Okay, because yeah. if you have co uh, some component that is not HTTPS, then you can have a security. Yeah, I've left myself vulnerable in that area. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So to take a look to the rules, we have first uh, some metadata. Okay, with the category. Of the rule, also we have the ID of the rule and the scope. Okay, a, a rule can be just for website, uh, can be also just for uh, local mm -hmm. because there is also a connector just for local stuff. Okay, okay, and we can uh, it can it can be any of them. Okay. okay, it can work for anything. So in this case, okay, then we have the constructor sure. and the important thing is what we want or where we can where we want to run the rule. Sure. Okay, so in this case, we are going to run it when we get some component from the website. Mm -hmm. We are going to run the rule when we detect that there is an image element. Mm -hmm. Also, when there is an audio, a video, a track, or source comp element. Okay. okay? Nice. And what we do is okay for the fetch. Okay. The first time I fetch something, I assume that is the website itself. Okay. Okay. So in this case, what we need to do is uh, analyze that is an HTTPS. Yeah. Okay. So I just validate the target, and when I'm validating the target, it's just I'm checking if it's HTTPS. Mm -hmm. If it is not HTTPS, then I report an error. Okay. Okay. If not, I set the target is served over HTTPS variable to true, mm -hmm. and we can start analyzing the next things. Okay, if the first if the first things fail, then we don't analyze anymore. You don't go further. Yeah. Okay. It's like okay, if your website is not secure, I don't care about your resources. <laughs> <laughs> your website is <laughs> yeah. secure. Okay. Absolutely. And then the next the next things I downloading. Okay, let me go again to this method. Okay, when ya, uh, when I already have set the target, I'm going for the next step. So as I told you before, if this variable is false, I just return and I finish the, the analysis. Yep. Uh, and then if not, if my website is HTTPS, then we analyze the, th uh, the next thing. Okay. First of all, we are also analyzing that if we had uh, any redirect, all the redirects are secure. Okay, so if okay. there's any redirects yeah, from the website, those are also secure. Yeah. And you can check that after you've checked. Okay. If we find anything that is not secure, we just report an error. Okay, nice. Okay. Nice. So in here I saw you got some events. Uh, are these all the events that we have access to when we're doing these checks? Or where would I go to see that kind of this library of events? Yeah. Okay, for, for that we can go to the documentation. Okay. So in the documentation we have a uh, event area in the 
uh, contributor guide. Okay. Okay. And we have here a uh, more extensive uh, list. Sure. Okay. We need to take into account that sometimes we, I mean, the sonar world is always evolving. Yeah. Always evolving. So yep. sometimes there is new there is new events or things that sometimes is maybe are not in the documentation, but it will be because uh, we want to uh, one of the, our target is to have a good documentation. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So well. You can see this is the list. Okay, we were using the fetch and resource type. Sure. And we were using the element. Okay. But we also have all of this. Okay, yeah, so nice. the first of all is the fetch start. Yeah. Okay, there is doc uh, two kinds of fetch, fetch start. The first one is just uh, this one. Yeah. And the other one is the target. So if when we start to download the target, we emit that event. Okay, yeah. and basically what how I said is just when I start to do downloading something, I I trigger this this event. Okay. Nice. The fetch error is when uh, the fetch fail, then I trigger this error. Uh, the scans is when I start scanning a website, mm -hmm. and when I end. So this those are the first event in the whole process, and the last one. And then we have the traverse. The traverse is when we start to move through, to the, move through the, the HTML. Okay, nice. Okay. And, well, I didn't mention, but uh, element is when we are doing the traversing, mm -hmm. okay, and we find uh, an element, an HTML element, sure. then we emit that, an event with that element. Okay, nice. Okay. So from these events, maybe we can look at uh, creating our own uh, rule. Sure. Yeah. We are going to do a, a quick example of how you, can you create your own rule. In this case, I mean, there is two ways to create a rule. Mm -hmm. One of them is what we call internally like official. That is that a, a rule that is part of SonarWall. Sure. The, I mean, from, it's part of the repository. Sure. And then, but then, uh, but also you can create your own rule mm -hmm. because maybe I mean, if it's something that can have, uh, is helpful for everybody. That's okay, but if it's something that is just for you, sure. So if I just it doesn't um, make sense to have it inside a Sonar World, but you can have it for your own. Sure. So if I'm managing a, my own website for a certain client, and there's certain rules that are only yeah, for something, this, yeah, something specific. For example, uh, uh, maybe that client wants to have always the name of the company in some specific uh, element or in. In or, the or header or in the footer or something. Or in accessibility, yeah. is there certain tags yeah. they put in there or metadata? So you can create your own rule just for that case. Okay. But no one else uh, care about that rule because sure. it's something for that client. Yeah, absolutely. So nice. you can create your own rule. Okay. In this case, we are going to create a rule inside SonarWall. Okay. Okay. So what I was thinking is, uh, I mean, imagine that you want that in your website. You don't want any external component, and it's something that is a project where few people are collaborating. Okay. So maybe that part wasn't clear, and there is people adding new uh, libraries or something. Okay. Okay. And you just want to have things inside your, I mean, that is in your domain. Okay. okay. No, you don't want any external resource. Okay. Okay. So to do that, the first thing we are going to do is. Uh, using we are going to use the a wizard to create the rule okay because you can do it manually but the wizard is going to create almost everything you need mm -hmm. okay, okay so to do that we just run yarn a new rule all right nice and it's going to walk me through some questions to help me build this it's yeah. already in there nice. yes we need Beautiful. to build the the for the structure of the rule, so we, uh, the wizard is going to ask a few questions. Yeah, first. perfect. Uh, first thing is asking if uh, our package is going to have more than one rule. Okay, okay. it's possible in Sonar World have a package with more than one rule. Okay, maybe because are related mm -hmm. and you don't want to have it in different rules. Sure. Okay, so we can create a, just a package, but with multiple rules. Okay. So in this case, we uh, we don't want to do that. Just gonna do so, one. Yeah, just one. So they are going to ask me for the name of the rule. Okay. Okay. In this case, I'm going to validate uh, the resource. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not very good with names, so... <laughs> so it's okay, it's yeah. okay. And then we need to explain what this rule is going to do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this rule checks if uh, I'm loading external resource. Nice. Just then you need to choose the category. In this case, I think a good fit would be security, yeah. but you can choose some of those. Okay. Also, uh, the last step is uh, choose what the, what do you want to analyze. Okay. If you want to analyze something related with the DOM, is you want to do something that need to inject J uh, JavaScript in your website, or if it's in this case, we just want to check the the request. Okay. The resource request. Okay. So we choose this one. Can oh, you and there is a new a new other that is just the the scope. Okay. If you want to be only for sites, if you want to be only for local, or if you want to work with any. In this case, we are going to choose site. Yep. Okay. Okay. This make all the magic, and then you have few steps you need to follow. That the first one is just run yarn okay just to link the dependencies and okay. link everything. sync everything back up yeah okay 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 we can see that something changed in my folder and i have here the rule nice okay i have a folder for test and other folder for source code and then a few configuration files that we always have in all the all the projects okay nice Okay. So we're ready to run this now. So now we can take a look to, to the code. Okay, okay, let's check it out. First of all, this is the index. It's like the entry point of the rule. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is more or less automatic. So there is some lint error, but nothing that we can solve quickly. Sure. Okay, and this is the the rule we generate automatically. Okay. Okay. There is some annotations that things you can do or just to help you to create your first rule. Okay. Like, okay, this is, for example, that uh, you need to add here any other uh, type of event you want to capture. Okay, okay in nice. this case, let's keep there for now. Uh, the schema is like, uh, if you want to configure the rule, then you need to say, okay, I want me, my, uh, my rule needs to be configurable, but those are the the rules that they need to check out. So the name of the property, whatever. Okay? okay. So in this case, we don't need it for now. And then you see that your code here, so you can start coding there. Okay. okay. In this case, in this case, this rule, uh, the wizard automatically create like three events. Okay. The fetch end, fetch error, and fetch start. Nice. In this case, I don't care about uh, the fetch end, neither the fetch error. Okay, just okay. for this example. So in this case, our rule, the first thing we need to know is our domain because we don't have access to that information. Uh, so what we can do is, okay, then I need to know the my URL and take the, the domain. Okay. So instead of using the fetch start, okay, I'm going to comment for now. We are going to use the uh, context.com fetch start target okay as I mentioned before this event is the uh, is triggered just when we start fetching the target sure. okay so our website um, fetch target we don't need this. And we don't need this. A little house okay. cleaning. Yeah, I'm just cleaning a few things. And now I'm going to create the the first bar the a variable to keep uh, store my domain. Okay. Okay. So this is this would be the current domain type of string. Oh, sorry. Current on. Oh fetch target we are going to get a fetch start event uh, 
Okay, so now we just need to say, okay, it's like, okay, what I need here. First, I need to take the URL I'm fetching. In mm -hmm. this case, is resource equal fetch star. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you want to know more about the the events and the property, you can do either or look in the code in here. Okay, or just go to the website and okay. take a look to the fetch star. Okay. okay. In this case, fetch star just have a resource that is an string and is the URL to that is going to be downloaded. Okay. Nice examples okay. of everything in the documentation. Yeah. So now what we need to do is validate the check if the no, sorry. What we need to do in this case is just store the domain. Okay, okay. so we are going to store the current domain. That is, we are going to use the URL API okay. with the resource. Okay, and we are going to get the host. Okay. I need to use the. I need to load the the API. So import URL from URL. Also. Though I'm not using those types, so I'm going to remove them. And we already have our our domain. Okay, so the next thing is okay, so the next request we I need to check it that are inside that domain. Okay. So on, on fetch. Okay, okay. The event, uh, this event is the same. Okay, mm -hmm. it's also a fetch start. We take the resource, and what we need to do is valid domain. Mm -hmm. And uh, if everything is okay, we just return. If not, we need to context report the resource the element in this case we don't have the element so we just set it as null and then the message in this case is going to be invalid resource okay nice okay remember uh, this, this uh, report needs to be Assigned, so it's going to be await. Okay. Okay. Assign. And we need to validate the domain. Okay. So to do that is something simple. Just validate the domain. We're going to get the resource that is a string, and we are going to take the domain from the resource that is new url resource hostname and we are going to compare okay both of them has to be the same domain and current domain all right okay i think that's all okay nice yeah, so to test it we can what well, to test it, first we need to build the, the project, okay? We are going to test first with a URL and then we are going to create the test for this, okay? okay? To the automatic test. Nice. So we can go, sorry, we can go here to the folder package, um, full validate resource, and run Jam, jam Okay. Running through yeah, it's right running, now. yeah, just it's building all the, the project. Mm -hmm. Meantime, we can we should add the rule to the to the configuration, okay, because it's something that uh, we need to add first. If not, we are not going to use it. Okay. <laughs> so we are going to remove all of this and add just all rule. validate resource. Okay, so for this we need to just go back and add just the rule we created. Okay, nice. Yeah, in this case, we don't need 
any of these. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, to change this. Oh, summary is okay. And so in here we're going to remove the Excel. It's not necessary. Uh, okay, so the rule was built. So mm -hmm. now we can go here. Sonar wall. We are already at the the name of the rule here. So we can run mm -hmm. yarn sonar wall http localhost. Okay, if you remember, this website has just a link to the short sure. file that is an external link. Okay. Okay. So let's see what we get. Yeah. Let's see if everything is okay because now, uh, well, we already built it, so everything was good. There's the connector. And you can see that you have an error uh, because uh, that's there. Because I have that external link there. Yeah. If I remove that external link. And so, in a matter of a few minutes, there, you were able to create a new code, add it to SonarWall and go out and check this yeah. new website. Yeah, it's really easy. Really cool, really cool. Okay, it's, yeah. So as you can see now, it finished without error because there is not any external uh, request. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So now we need to create the automatic test too because that's, that's important always. If you can see, if you take a look to any of the rules or any of the components, we have tests for them. Okay. Okay, so we need to create it. In this case is okay this uh, we have few tools also for the test so for example generate html page is going to create a basic uh, website mm -hmm. without any link anything so in this case this rule should pass because we don't have any external uh, request but the second one we want to fail okay so to fail uh, the message is going to be uh, invalid resource Okay. And the first parameter is what we want to be in the header and the second one in the body. So we are going to add this same code we have here, sorry. Okay, so we're gonna add that too. Yeah. We are going to add that script to the body. Okay, we can take a look to this anyway. Uh, not here, but in Sonar World. Sonar World test. So go back to the helpers. Scenario. And means we have the generate HTML page. Okay, this is the the HTML is going to be generated. Okay. So, okay, we can test it. Go back to the rule folder. Uh, rule uh, validate resource. Yarn test. If I didn't forget any semicolon or anything. This is going to run. Okay. Yeah. It's working. It's working. Yeah. Now it's run. It's running all the the other linters we have, like Slint, Markdown Lint. Okay. And now it's compiling the project again, okay. generating the JS. Compiling it. Yeah. And after that, we are going to. Okay. So now it's running the test. Okay. And now we're running the tests. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, yep, to both of them. Well, for now, two has passed. Okay, so a couple and now there. you see they open Chrome also. Yes. Yeah. What the test is doing is running a server. Okay. Okay, and if you don't say anything different, it's gonna run both uh, connectors, the JS DOM and Chrome. Okay. If you say, okay, I don't want to, or I'm doing a specific rule that is working just with Chrome, and I don't care then about JS DOM, you can ignore it, okay? You okay. can come here and say, okay, ignore it, sorry, ignore it, connectors, and say JS DOM. Okay, so super flexible to my needs, yeah. whatever I want to do. The test also can be configurable and you can do a lot of things. Here. Okay. So we are going to run again the test. This is going to do all the process again. It's going to run the linters. In this case, a slint, then uh, markdown lint. And it's going to 
but only going to use one connector this time because we've told it to ignore the other. Yeah, so uh, the result should be two passes and two skip. Okay, nice. So we will see that. Okay, nice. so yeah. Also, if you want to see the uh, the documentation, is already have thing. Okay. A few comments and oh, what, uh, and you can modify whatever you want, but it's more or less all the uh, skeleton is already done in the documentation. Nice, oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, let's see if the rule pass on the test. Okay, <laughs> final test. Moment of truth. Yeah, and as you can see, two passes and two escape. As okay. expected. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, that was awesome. Thank you, David, for walking us through creating a new rule, getting those results, and adding that to Sonar. Super cool. I love the documentation. Uh, if you're following online, definitely uh, go check out the website, the documentation. There'll be links below here. Um, but thank you, David, for walking us through that. And be sure thank to you. stay tuned for the next episode. We'll be diving into a little bit more detail on these rules and how to configure them further. Thank you. Thank you.